second winner, Ricardo Zavalla. Third winner, Hi everyone, uh, today I decided to take a break from my regular coding videos to make more of a vlog type video instead. And uh, you know, I want to really show you the process of uh, how I go about solving problems usually. And then I'm also uh, going to this event later today where people will be pitching their startup ideas and I'll be pitching my startup idea too. So hopefully I'll be able to talk about it later today. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let me just quickly talk about what I've done so far this week to give you some context on what I'm working on. Uh, basically, I'm trying to set up Twitter integration for the web app I'm working on called Edit Dojo. And I was working on the sign up with Twitter button yesterday. And for that, I found this tutorial. Uh, it turns out to be pretty good. So I basically, you know, followed everything and pretty much copy and paste everything. And then here's the result I have. Uh, you have the sign up sign in button and when you click it you go to Twitter and then you go back to my website and then it says welcome username and once a user signs up to my website using Twitter I want to be able to start interacting with that uh, user's Twitter account from my Twitter account at edit dojo and I think the first step for doing that would be to make this account edit dojo follow them so that's what I'm gonna work on today and by the way, whenever I start coding, uh, what I like doing is I like going into the accessibility settings and I just invert colors. And then recently I started using grayscale on top of that too. And the reason I do it is because this way, my browser has a dark background and everything else like my terminal and my editor has a dark background too. So throughout this video, you might see a weird color scheme from time to time, but that's basically just the way I like it. Anyway, I'm looking at the admin panel right now of my website. And you know, I'm looking at the user record and I see three users. And one of them, YK Dojo, this is the one uh, I created with my personal Twitter account. And actually my personal Twitter account has the same handle. So it looks like uh, my Twitter handle is automatically recorded as my username when I sign in. So I guess what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say, Whenever someone signs up for the first time, I'll log into the Edit Dojo uh, Twitter account, you know, just like I did in my Twitter bot tutorial, and then I'll follow uh, that user's account using the username. Obviously, this is not going to be the perfect solution because you know, what if this user changes their user handle? I mean, their Twitter handle after signing up. But I think this solution is good enough for now, so I'll see if I can implement that. Okay, so I did a little bit of thinking and right now what I'm trying to understand is what happens exactly when I click this sign up sign in button because all I did is, you know, I copy and pasted uh, code from a tutorial. And uh, it looks like this is just a plain uh, link. So let me show you some of the code. Uh, the relevant part is just this one, uh, provided login URL Twitter. And if you look at the HTML snippet right here, it's just a link. And when you copy, if you copy, you know, this link address and then uh, put it in a new tab, it just redirects to Twitter and then back to my website. So I think I'm going to look into, you know, exactly what happens uh, when you go to this URL. And then I'll say, whatever happens there, you know, I'll add the uh, part about following uh, this user, maybe before redirecting back to my website. Okay, so I started reading the documentation of the library I'm using for this, but I'm actually starting to think, maybe I was thinking about it in a wrong way. You know, whatever happens um, when the user clicks, signs in, doesn't matter. You know, the fact is, it goes back to the URL that I specify in Twitter. So maybe I can just create a special URL uh, like a slash, you know, say sign in and have Twitter, you know, redirect the browser back to this URL. And then maybe I can make a view for this, like a Django view uh, that handles the following and everything. Uh, so let me look into that approach instead. Okay, so I wanted to do some more coding today to solve that problem. 
But unfortunately, I actually need to get ready for uh, the startup pitch contest thing I told you about earlier. So I think I'm gonna do that now and I'll do more coding either later tonight or maybe tomorrow. Okay, so before I go to this event, uh, let me tell you guys just a little bit about it. Uh, apparently it's an event for Canadian newcomers to pitch their startup ideas. And you know, I'm a Canadian newcomer. I'm a recent uh, permanent resident in Canada and I have a startup idea. So I was like, you know, why not give it a try? And I wrote this little application explaining uh, what my idea is. And uh, apparently I was selected as one of the 10 people to pitch their ideas today. You know, I just got that email earlier. So yeah, I was pretty excited. Okay, the event is happening in 12 minutes and I have 15 minutes to get there. I mean, it's a 15 minute walk from here. I think I'm gonna be fine. Also, it's snowing, it's pretty nice. Okay, I just got here. Um, I think I'm a few minutes late, but it's probably okay. We'll see. So, I just noticed how Canadian this place is. I mean, there's the stage right there. And there's hockey right here. I mean, how, how much more Canadian could it get? Okay, so the event started with a panel of entrepreneurs talking about how to start successful businesses in Canada. And it turned out I was going to be the first one to pitch. So let me show you just a small part of my pitch. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Uh, my name is YK and I'm originally from Japan. Uh, I came to Canada about five years ago and eventually I became a software developer here. So my uh, the idea I'm working on is going to be a new uh, language learning app. Okay, so the rest of the pitch was basically the same stuff as what I already explained on this channel. Uh, basically, you write stuff in Japanese if you're learning Japanese, and Japanese native speakers are gonna fix it for you. And then you're gonna have to fix other people's posts in English, assuming that you're fluent in English. Anyway, after my pitch, uh, nine other people pitched. For example, this guy was pitching a company that produces 360 degree videos. And after all that, the judges went away to decide which five of us are going to win. Okay, and it turned out the first winner was the 360 view guy. And then he was the second winner, and the third winner turned out to be this guy. So at this point, I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm actually not gonna win. What am I gonna say to my subscribers? And then this happened. Four winner, YK Sujin. I go with you. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Guys, I did it. All right, I'm done for the day. I'm super tired, but I'm happy that I won. Um, apparently, there's gonna be like a free week of um, bootcamp programs, startup bootcamp programs, but I don't know what's gonna happen exactly. I'll probably talk more about it later on this channel. Okay, so that was pretty fun. But actually, after that, the last few days have been kind of slow. Uh, partly because I needed to do some work for our first meetup in Toronto and the Discord server I recently set up for this channel. But I'm back at coding today. Okay, so I'm on Twitter's developer website now and I was looking at this section, callback URL, and it looks like it goes to this URL. Uh, what I'm guessing what happens is when someone signs in uh, with Twitter, Twitter sends us back to that URL and then the library that I'm using uh, for this purpose just handles that request. So I guess I'll need to either you know, do something with the library or maybe uh, when the library sends us to this root URL, um, maybe we can do something special with Django instead. Uh, let me think about that for a second. Okay, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, you know, whatever happens with the Twitter login workflow, what happens is eventually, you know, we go back to this root path and then it goes to the login view. And in the login view, uh, we're just rendering 
this template login.html. So I guess what we can do is before we render that, we'll say uh, follow the user if the user is signed in and you know we haven't followed them yet. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all we need to do, I think. Okay, so I just searched for uh, Django get user in a view uh, because we need to be able to get the user's info in our view. And then I found Stack Overflow page and uh, I found this code snippet. Uh, it looks like this is a view that takes a request. And then uh, to get the user, it looks like all we need to do say is request.user. And then to get the username, we can do request.user.username. So let me see if that works. Uh, so I just got an error here. Uh, let me just read the error here. Uh, it says bool object is not callable. And then it looks like it's a line eight of views.py in users. So let me take a look at that. Okay, so it's right there. Uh, this is one of the lines I copied from Stack Overflow. And I think what's happening is this is just a Boolean or bool, but we're trying to call it as if it's a function. So if we just delete these parentheses, hopefully it's gonna work. Uh, let's see if that's the case. All right, so it's working. Uh, what I did is I got you know our username uh, with the code we saw earlier, request.user.username, and then I just put it uh, in this variable called username, and then I'm returning a response that says username and then my username. Uh, it, look, it looks like it's working. So I've tested the part about retrieving the username. Now we just need to follow this account. Okay, and I think the way I'm gonna do that part is I'm gonna you know show you the strategy I'm gonna use uh, to go about it. And then when I'm done with the code, I'm gonna show you later. Uh, so basically the idea is gonna be, you know, once uh, the user is authenticated and once we retrieve the username, we'll say um, log into our special Twitter account at Edit Dojo, and then uh, follow this user at username from that account. And I think at the end, what we wanna do is uh, we want to be able to store some information about uh, if we follow them already or not. Because if we follow them already, you know, we don't have to follow them again. But maybe we'll uh, implement that later. Uh, we might not need to do that right now. So I'll say later, um, store some info about if we already follow them or not. And actually uh, logging into Edit Dojo and following someone that should be easy because I already made a tutorial on that. So I'm just gonna use my open source code right here uh, for my Twitter bots. Here, uh, what I did is I logged into Edit Dojo and then I tweeted at someone. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test you know this part of the code by tweeting at username, and then later I'm gonna change that part of the code and you know just a little bit to follow them instead. Okay, so let's get to coding. Okay, so it looks like sending a tweet works here. Uh, I just said at you know, my personal account testing this tweet one. So that part is this line of the code, api.updated status. I'm just gonna look for you know, the equivalent function for following instead. So it looks like it's this function, api.createFriendship. Uh, let me see if that works. So I'm gonna replace update status here with create friendship. And then uh, maybe it's just gonna be username here. Let's try that. I'm gonna refresh uh, our homepage here. It looks like I got no error. So let's go to Twitter and then refresh Twitter. Oh, actually I was already following myself. So let me unfollow myself and make sure I'm not following uh, my personal account anymore. And let me do the same thing again, no errors. And when I go to Firefox, yeah, I see it. Uh, it looks like this script is working. Uh, so there are a few things I still need to clean up here. I still need to take care of the case when 
uh, the user is not logged in. I think what I'm going to do is I'll return early if the user is not logged in, you know, like right here. And then if the user is logged in, then, you know, grab the username and do this thing. Uh, you know, right now, all it does is just follow someone. Uh, it doesn't do that much. But, you know, hopefully I'll have more functions later. So actually, you know, I think this is pretty much it for this video. I'll put all this code and more at csdojo.io slash edit as usual. And actually, you know, vlogging and coding at the same time was kind of hard. Uh, probably just partly because I'm not that used to it. So hopefully I'll focus more on coding this weekend and maybe a little bit uh, early next week. And uh, for the next video, I'll think of something else or, you know, I'll do another vlog. Uh, I'll think about that. Anyway, thank you as always for watching my videos. And oh, by the way, if you haven't uh, joined our Discord server, you should join us. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.